I'm Richard Herring. You're about to watch my new show, Richard Herring's Meaning of Life, which has been put together by those Welsh misfits at www.gofasterstripe.com. It's like a TV show, but it'll be on the internet, which means we can go on as long as we like. Uh, there's no commissioners. We just do it if we want to do it. We can say anything if we want as well. I can say Willis if I want. <laughs> And probably will later. I'm not going to do it yet. That would be uh, a shame. It's costing us quite a lot to make this, uh, but we're giving it out for free because we're nice guys. But it does mean uh, we can't have everything we want. We, we would have had a more kind of plush set, I guess, maybe uh, some lasers going off and probably a, a camera like on a crane, you know, swooping over the audience. We haven't got any of that, but we do have a £30 uh, smoke machine that's, got, that's gone off. Uh, <laughs> Someone turned it off. <laughs> Doesn't work, but it looks... You know, imagine if we make some money, how good that will, <laughs> that will be. <laughs> we... <laughs> and we have Craig on a handheld uh, camera who can just kind of come whoosh in at my face. Whoa, it's exciting, whoa! Yeah, pretty exciting. I think you'll agree. <laughs> Uh, if you like this and you would like us to make more of them, then there's lots of ways you can reward us. You can go to www.gofasterstripe.com and buy one of my DVDs or any of the other fantastic DVDs they do there. I'll tell you more about those later. You can go to my website and book a ticket to see me on tour. That would be very helpful. You can go to Go Faster Stripe and download a longer version of this show or some extras, uh, which you'll have to pay a little bit for. Uh, or if you just tell your friends about uh, this whole experience, that would be a useful thing. Get them to watch it too or you could buy a ticket and come and see it live at the Les square theater like these idiots did look at them it's fun isn't it well, didn't you like did you like the smoke machine just see, see if it's, it's 30 pounds that cost me <laughs> I mean, you know there's always I mean, I'm a very hopeful man do you like the way I went back I've tried it both and Craig's got a good good shot of that <laughs> Uh, and amazingly, uh, just before the show starts, I just have to tell you this, uh, that I've, I have written a script, unbelievably. Uh, whether I'll know it is another thing. Uh, but the script I wrote turned out, just coincidentally, uh, this is a show called The Meaning of Life. Uh, it's 42 pages long. <laughs> there, look, there's the proof. There's page 42. That's the end. Uh, so that's uh, for Douglas Adams fans. That's either a really positive sign, a lucky sign that Douglas Adams is looking down at us, or it means I'm going to die in the next three years. <laughs> So anyway, let the festivities commence. Where did we come from? What are we? Where are we going? The answers, my friend. In the wind, they are blowing. Is the mind of God even worth knowing? What's the meaning of life? That's what this show will be showing. Is life just a dream? Is anything certain? Is the world just a stage? If so, where's the curtain? Is the queen really a lizard or is David I bonkers? If a serial killer kills another serial killer, does he work like conkers? Is the past a foreign country? Does history repeat? Does he who can do and he who can't teach? Does he who can't teach become a games teacher? Did God fake his own death so that he could murder Nietzsche? Are we victims of fate or is it free will? Is there a bigger trial on earth than AA gear? Is the cannibalistic Eucharist the spookiest sacrament? Does a suicidal be self-indulgent with ennui? Recite a sad soliloquy. To be a bee or not to be a bee? From platonic idealism to high-figures nihilism to Judaism, loving jism, it's all just dynamism. What's the meaning of it all? What's the meaning of asking? Don't get a logical positivist on me unless you want an ass kicking. Cause I just wanna know What's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of life? It's no big deal It's just the meaning of life It's just the meaning of life It's just the meaning of life, meaning of life. Richard Henry's meaning of life Have you ever wondered why we're here? If you have, you're an idiot we're here to see Richard Herring's Meaning of Life. And please welcome the man with all the questions and a few less of the actual answers is Richard Herring! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. 
Lovely to be here. And Leicester Square Theatre should have killed me last year. Take that, TV. We don't need no TV. Hello and welcome to Richard Herring's Meaning of Life, or as all the cool kids are calling it, Rahamol. Which sounds a little bit too like Rahipnol for, <laughs> for my liking, but maybe that's apt because this show will be so boring that it will send you to sleep and then I'm going to creep out of the screen and molest you. <laughs> this show... <laughs> It's like a cross between Jimmy Savile and The Ring. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Don't go to sleep. I'm going to get you. <laughs> Over the next few months, I'm going to answer all the big conundrums that have puzzled priests, scientists and philosophers, like which came first, the chicken or the egg? It was the egg, obviously. That's uh, it's just simple, isn't it? That's the answer. I can't believe that's confused people for so long. It's, why has that baffled anyone? A, a thing very like a chicken that wasn't quite a chicken laid an egg and that a chicken came out of that egg. So the egg came first. It was a chicken egg. <laughs> Disappointing, isn't it? It's pretty easy to answer. Got one down. Unless, unless they're asking which came first in a race. Uh, in which case, it's probably the chicken. Unless the race was down a mountain, which case might be the egg, I suppose. So... Uh, <laughs> It's more tricky than it looks, isn't it? It's easy to dismiss it, unless it's which ejaculated first, in which case it's definitely the chicken, uh, especially if it was using the egg as a kind of vibrating device in its cloaca. <laughs> like some kind of poultry paedophile. <laughs> That's pretty much going to be the tone of the whole thing, I'm afraid. It's, there will be a few cleverer jokes in this show. And first up, this is the first show, and our first subject will be creation. Richard Terry's meaning. Where did the universe come from? And why doesn't it go back where it came from and stop sponging off us, bloody, bloody universe? We were here first. I hate the bloody universe. Uh, there is a theory that the universe is just a computer simulation and we are characters within a computer game. And I have to say, sometimes it does feel to me uh, well, that I am a character with no free will in a game that is being played by a 13-year-old child. Uh, <laughs> which would certainly explain why I spend so much of my time picking my nose. Uh, aha, I made him pick his nose again. Aha, uh, it's, better, it's better than a computer game run by a 46-year-old man like me who doesn't understand how the newfangled controls work and so everyone in his universe is just walking up against walls, <laughs> unable to open any doors. They don't know what's going on. Uh, though, to be fair, there could be people like that in this universe. We'd never get to meet them. The 17th century scholar Archbishop Usher uh, worked out that the universe started uh, on the nightfall before the 23rd of October, 4004 BC, uh, which is yeah, very specific. It's good that he's worked it out uh, to that extent. And it's kind of slightly laughable, maybe, that he, he was so sure of that exact time. But then scientists say the universe started somewhere between 10 billion and 20 billion years ago, which, to be honest, isn't that specific, is it? That's a bit... I'd rather someone had a proper guess. We could all get an answer that's 10 billion years out. <laughs> so at least Archbishop Russia had a go. Uh, it's odd that it started on the 23rd of October, though. That's why I wonder is, had God just been given a second-hand diary that he was trying to <laughs> use as it some kind of tax avoidance issue? I've noticed the 22nd of October is International Stutterers Day. I'm just wondering, <laughs> did God, does God hate stutterers? Is that why he started on the 23rd, didn't want to give them any... Uh, publicity for what they were doing certainly explains he hates stutterers for some reason it certainly explains why his main prayer starts ah for, for, for father uh, that's because he hates he hates the stutterers uh, is the universe infinite or are we in a system of multiverses uh, in which case some people argue if that's the case that every single possibility that could ever happen is happening somewhere in one of those universes, which means in one of those universes, the doors at the back are about to burst open and Amy Pond from Doctor Who and 13 from House are about to rush up on here, grab me and force me to have sex with them whilst they les up. <laughs> Damn, wrong universe. I hate that alternate Richard Herring. There are an infinite number of them as well. That's what's most annoying and I'm still not one of them. That's very... <laughs> Ever since mankind has been able to imagine, we've been trying to work out how the universe was created. Our religious people think that God created the universe, 
That's their answer to that question, which is fine until a six-year-old child approaches them and says, yeah, but if God created the universe, who created God? And who created whoever created him? And who created that? And so on to infinity plus one. And then the religious person will say no, because God just is. That's how. As if that's an answer, but and surely God is more incredible than the universe, right? And he's more perfect and amazing. If you can believe that God can just be, then what's to stop you believing that the universe can just be, unless you think the universe is better than God? Is that what you think, religious people? Are you saying that God isn't as good as the universe that he created? Oh, you're going to hell. Uh, bad luck. <laughs> It's no answer at all, uh, but uh, scientists are no better. They say the universe began with a big bang, an explosion perhaps of super concentrated matter, but then the same child will go up to them and say, well, what was there before the big bang and what made the big bang and what stuff was in the big bang? Where did that come from? And then the scientists will say, oh no, because that stuff just is, that's how. You're, you're just exactly the same as the religious people. You've got no answers. You're the, just the same people in different hats. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Both science and religion try to explain where stuff come from and then just give up. They don't have any answers. Being satisfied with the Big Bang theory is it's like uh, if, there's a, if there's a terrorist attack and the police discover that it was caused by a bomb and just say, well, that's that. That's that sorted out. Yeah, that's that case closed. <laughs> that explosion was caused by a bomb. Let's move on. Yeah, but who put the bomb there? What was their motivation? What if it happens again? We have found out it was caused by a bomb. Now let's move on to our next mystery. <laughs> what I can't understand is why would God bother? That's what, if, that's what I don't understand. If I was an all-powerful supernatural force, I don't think I'd waste my time creating a universe of stupid people to judge and then reward the most stupid and smug people for believing in me when I obviously didn't exist. <laughs> What I would do is make an, an enormous cheese toasty sandwich <laughs> with pickle and then, then I'd stay in bed all day making my own amusement. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean I would be wanking. So, <laughs> all I would need in my universe is some bread, some cheese, some pickle, a sandwich toaster maker and a piece of old rag. Um, <laughs> So thinking about it, I probably wouldn't need someone to, to clean the rag for me every now and again, so I'd probably have to make a laundrette and a, maybe a couple who could run the laundrette. That's all. A, a detergent factory, all the people in some schooling system, some kind of infra infrastructure. You can see how it got out of hand, can't you, in the first place? That's... <laughs> mm. Let's look at some of the religious theories uh, from other countries. The Bushmen of the Kalahari think God was a praying mantis called Kagan who created the moon by throwing his shoe up into the sky. Which, that was only disproved in 1969 when man finally landed on the moon and discovered it wasn't a praying mantis's shoe. It was a bit too big, it was a bit too, it turned out it was too big. You think that sounds crazy, an eccentric insect wearing footwear creating the world, but you know, you have to remember the Kalahari people were right from much nearer the beginning of time than we were, so it's much more likely that they're, they, the, the world was created much nearer that time, so they're much more likely to be right. It's probably a kind of case of Chinese whispers, you know, it started as Kagan, the praying mantis with shoes on, and then Chinese whispers over, that's Jesus Christ, isn't it? Actually, you can see how that... See how that happened. Uh, Kagan used to live with humans, but he got fed up with their foolishness and left. Which makes fucking sense. Uh, that makes more sense than what we believe. Uh, the Fulani of West Africa says the world was created by a drop of milk that somehow appeared. <laughs> and out of all the answers, that is the weakest thing. I've... <laughs> that is the least thought through one. Yeah, it was a drop of milk. So... Somehow appeared. I don't have all... I don't have all the details of that, but that is, I hope that answers your question. We can move on. Kids are impressed. Oh, it's a drop of milk. I'm not impressed with it. Uh, Sumerians believe that uh, the humankind was created by gods trying to breathe life into clay when they were all drunk. Uh, but mostly unsuccessfully, they were too drunk. It was like a heavenly breathalyzer for gods. If they were too drunk to make a human being, they, well, they weren't allowed uh, to drive that night. Um, Enki, who some of you might remember from my Talking Cock show, uh, he, he managed it, uh, though he was pretty drunk. That's why humanity is burdened with problems, because of that drunkenness. We're like crack babies, uh, <laughs> essentially. Um, and, 
Uh, the ancient Egyptians worshipped a deity called Atum, who didn't need six days to create the universe. Six seconds would do for him. On that relief, what it says behind there is, I copulated with my hand, my fist became my spouse. Uh, it's, like, it's like he has to repeat it. It's like people weren't quite... What? Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> don't understand what you mean by that, Atom. What are you saying? I, I, uh, I had a date with Pamela Henderson. <laughs> no. No, not really with you still. Uh, I primed my pump-action spunk gun. <laughs> what do you mean exactly, Atom? I'm, I'm not really getting it. I wanked like an Egyptian. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me that I created an uncooked stomach pancake. <laughs> Come again. Uh, I burnt the worm. I made the ball cyclops cry. No, Aiton, I've no idea how you created the universe. What are you talking about? I went fishing with my pole and my line of pearly string. I squeezed the toothpaste from the middle. I evicted my testicular squatters. I'm not... Really, you're going to have to be a bit plainer about this, Aiton. We don't understand what you... I'd done a wank. <laughs> what was that, Aiton? What did you say? Uh, I said I created the universe by wanking it up. <laughs> are you proud of what you've done, Aiton? Are you proud now? That's... Yes. Are you, are you, listen to the question. Are you proud? <laughs> no, I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm ashamed of what I've done. Uh, the Germans believe uh, that the universe and everything in it was created especially for them. Or so you'd think from the way they carry on. <laughs>In the beginning was the word. God created all things bright and beautiful. He made the little flowers that open, the little birds that sing, the purple-headed mountain. Check out the hymn, it's in there. And on the sixth day, he created man. Look, Adam, I have made all this for you. Oh, thanks. Do you like this little flower? It opens and everything. And the purple-headed mountain? I'm most proud of that. Do you like it? Do you like its purple head? Yeah, yeah, it's, all, it's good. What's wrong? Why have you made me all this stuff? Because I love you. That's what I was worried about. No. Oh, no, not like that. There's no, there's nothing funny going on. What, you've just made me loads of stuff and a paradise to live in for no reason and you're not expecting anything in return. No, no, of course not. You just do whatever you like and I will be here watching over you. Do you mind not watching over me? It's, it's a bit creepy. I can't help it. I'm here all the time. Watching. All the time, whatever I'm doing, even when I'm in the toilet. Yes, but don't worry, I'm just watching you in a friendly and non-threatening way. It's a bit weird, just you and me and no one else. Not just you, the little flowers that open, the little birds that sing, the purple-headed mountain. Yeah, yeah, the purple-headed mountain. That's, to be honest, that's one of the weirdest bits. Is it meant to be symbolic of something? It's, oh, no, no, it's not meant to represent that. I just like purple. Look, I'll make things a bit less weird for you. Just go to sleep. I don't want to go to sleep. Go on, go to sleep. I'm not comfortable going to sleep. Are you hovering around up there above the water? Go to sleep. Here, get off. What's going on? Nothing. Yes, there is. Look, I've got a big bloody hole in me. This isn't what it looks like. One of my ribs is missing. I knew all this paradise was too good to be true, that you'd want something in return or turn out to be a Hannibal Lecter. There is a perfectly innocent explanation. Yeah, I wasn't born yesterday. Well, you were. OK, but I don't know you from, from myself. You're a total stranger. I should never have trusted you. If only I'd had a mum to warn me about people like you, strange bloke living alone in an immaculate garden. You've got the wrong end of the stick. Look, I'm making you a friend. There she is. Do you like her? Yeah, yeah, she's great. Do you like her more or less than the purple-headed mountain? Um, equal to that? Good. See, there's nothing weird about me. You two have fun. Will you be watching? Yes. What? He likes to watch everything. I'm not going to do anything if he's watching. Just because I'm only wearing a fig leaf, that doesn't mean I'm a slag. Women can wear what they want. That doesn't mean anything. Don't, don't cock block me, God. Just can stop watching. Do anything you like. I have to watch anything except you can't eat apples off of that tree. That's all. 
Why not? Do not eat those apples lest you die. Ooh. But predictably, Adam and Eve ate the apple anyway. A child of three could see that coming, but God was surprised. <laughs> you disobeyed me. Get out of my garden. Don't blame us. It's your fault. Did you not eat the apple? Yeah, but you set that up. It's entrapment. No, I made you with free will to choose. You didn't. You made us with curiosity, and now you're punishing us for behaving in exactly the way you intended. No. You're not stupid, are you, God? No, I'm not. I'm all-knowing. Exactly. Then you know that the minute someone says don't do something, people are going to do it. That is human nature. Plus, if we hadn't eaten the apple, we wouldn't have known we were naked, we'd never have had sex, and the human race would not exist. It would have just been you and us in a garden forever. Is that really what you wanted? Yes. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Come on, Eve, we're leaving. No, you're not. I'm throwing you out. No, you're not. We're leaving anyway. Come on. Good, I'm glad. I didn't want you here in the first place. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. I'm going to increase your pain in childbirth for that. Ooh. And in the sweat of your face, you shall eat your bread. Good, I like the sweat of my face. You, you don't. I do. It's nice. It's salty. It's, it gives a bit of flavour. By the way, I think all the stuff you made for me is rubbish. What, even the purple-headed mountain? Especially the purple-headed mountain. But secretly, God was pleased. The pair had done exactly what he wanted. Now they would bring forth progeny, meaning he would have even more people to confuse with his strange and inconsistent commandments. And he would be able to punish for behaving exactly the way that he'd intended all along. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord. So we've had a look at uh, the religious views of creation. Let's have a look at what the scientists think. So the main argument against the scientific version of creation is if they're right, why have they come up with such a shitty name for it? The Big Bang. That is... It's like a four-year-old child has come up. What should we call the creation of the universe? It's, uh, was it big? It was as big as an elephant. Let's call it big. And what noise did it make? Oh, it was louder than a balloon bursting. It was a bang, a big bang. It's pathetic. It was actually coined by the steady state universe theorist, Fred Hoyle, who did it to take the piss out of people who thought the universe was expanding. He coined the phrase and then they used it themselves. This isn't like gay people reclaiming the word queer or black people referring to themselves as N-words. This is, this is systems cosmologists going, oh yeah, Big Bang, what a brilliant name for the start of the universe. Like, they're tiny kids. They tried to change uh, the name. They came up with a committee. This is genuinely true to rename it, because they realised it was embarrassing. Uh, what they came up with uh, was uh, eight, the HSK theory, uh, which stands for Horrendous Space Kablooey. <laughs> which comes from a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon. They've managed to find one more childish name for it. The, the cosmologists are all twats. Uh, bear that in mind when we have one up in a bit. Uh, Stephen Hawking argues that time travel will never be possible in the future because if it is invented, then someone would have already come back to visit us from the future. But what if the people who've come back from the future got distracted by the first pub they saw uh, and went inside and fancied the barman or barmaid and then forgot about their time traveling mission? <laughs> It's what's known in time-travelling theory as the Gary Sparrow constant. <laughs> it is the strongest force known in the universe. The force of the paucity of ambition. <laughs> Stronger than gravity. Scientists believe that everything in the universe was once concentrated into a single point, which, that is just utterly ridiculous. At least have common sense. How would everything fit? I've got three of the things from the universe uh, here. I've got a tin of tomatoes, a broken cup, and Stephen Hawking's uh, brief history of time. Uh, and I'm going to try and get them into one single infinitesimally small piece of matter right now. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're, well, Rich, pour the tomatoes into the cup. That will, that will help. We'll give that a go, but some of the tomatoes have gone on Stephen Hawking's book now. But look, it's, that is still now, look. That's just made a mess of a brief history of time and improved it. It's kind of a work of art, but if... <laughs> these are just three of the things in the universe. There's probably over a million things in the universe. <laughs> One of those things is Saturn, which is, is really huge. 
If I can't even get those three bits into, how would all the fit stuff fit? It doesn't, just use common sense, scientists. That's all I'm saying, common sense. Religious people at least have the decency to stick to their theory once they've come up with it. Scientists keep on changing theirs every few years, just when a new bit of evidence comes along, at least. They don't, chop, they don't chop and change the religious people like you scientists. And I respect them for that. Uh, head back to ancient Greece and science was telling us that the planet Earth was static and the centre of the universe. Uh, Ptolemy here, uh, he, he, came, he had to come up with a bizarre uh, spirally orbit to explain why Mars kind of went around the Earth in such a ridiculous way. That's what he came up with there. That explains why Mars jumps around in the sky uh, and still goes around the Earth. Even in the 20th century, plenty of scientists were saying that the universe had no beginning and had been here forever. Why wasn't the night sky totally light then, you scientific idiots? Because all the light would have had infinity years to get here. It would be light. You idiots, you don't know anything about science. Uh, Einstein might have been able to come up with uh, E equals MC squared and shag Marilyn Monroe, but... Even he didn't think the universe was expanding. What a clueless dick he was. He's, and he's also... Uh, he was his day's Miley Cyrus as well. He is... That is <laughs> He's licking an atom there, that's what he's doing, that is in a sexy way. It's a shame when in the old days physicists had to be sexy as well or no one would listen to what they had to say. <laughs> they say that light goes uh, at uh, uh, 299,792,458 metres per second. Uh, it's not possible to go any faster than that. It is possible. You go at 299,792,459 metres per second. You're seriously saying just one metre a second more would be impossible. That's hardly anything. It's, it's a, not, at least God would have rounded it up to 300,000 if he was going to set a limit. He wouldn't have had this ridiculous number. It's common sense. Common sense has got us a long way in science. It's common sense that told us that the Earth is the centre of the universe and everything goes around us because you can see everything moving around us. It's common sense that the Earth is static because if it was moving, we would all fall off. Common sense, scientists. That's, uh, scientists could do with more common sense. How can aliens get here? If there is no, if they can't go faster than the speed of light, they wouldn't be able to get it. Wormholes? No science. There are no worms in space. They wouldn't be able to breathe. And they can't make holes in nothing. That is ridiculous. Science needs more common sense. That is my point. And to find out more about the scientific ideas uh, of the creation of the universe, will you please welcome the cosmology correspondent from The New Scientist. It's Marcus Chown, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome. Come on in. Sit down. You, you could have dressed up. That's all I'm saying. I put on an ill-fitting suit for this. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you very much. So I just kind of want an explanation, really, in simple terms, more simple than Stephen Hawking's is manages, <laughs> um, of what the Big Bang actually is. Right. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when we look out at the universe, uh, we see something like 100 billion galaxies. They yeah. are the building blocks of the universe. You know, one of them's the Milky Way that we live in. And they're all flying apart from each other. Yeah. Uh, and so if we kind of imagine that kind of expansion running backwards like a movie in reverse, we come to a time 13.82 billion years ago when everything was compressed into a tiny, tiny volume. And when you squeeze something into a very small volume, it gets very hot. Have you mm. ever squeezed the air in a bicycle pump? The, um, the tomatoes uh, <laughs> tried to do that. <laughs> they didn't get hot. They just kind of so, went on Stephen Hawkins's book. This, this, yeah. So this compressed. <laughs> <laughs> so this compressed region, 13.8 billion years ago, was very hot. It was like a fireball, like the fireball of a yeah. nuclear explosion. But when you think of a uh, an explosion, it could be a stick of dynamite or whatever. After a, an hour or a day or whatever, the, the heat dissipates into the environment. But yeah. the, the firewall of the Big Bang was bottled up inside the universe. So it had nowhere to go. So the heat's all around us today. So that's the second piece of uh, evidence that the universe began in a hot, dense phase. If you tune a, um, a television between the stations, something like 1% of the static or snow you see on the screen has come from the Big Bang. It's the heat of the Big Bang. Yeah. But where did the stuff come from that was in the Big Bang? Where did that come from? Well, that's very interesting because... How uh, big was the, the Big Bang? How was the big was the piece yeah. of super concentrated well, piece of well, matter? Let's, let's just say, first of all, that the, the basic Big Bang idea is that the yeah. universe started in this hot, dense phase. It's been expanding and cooling ever since. And out of that cooling debris have congealed the galaxies like a Milky Way. Uh, but this, this, this model... Yeah. Uh, fails to predict what we observe in the universe in three incredibly major ways. 
And so three things have to be bolted on to this model to make sense of it. And one of them is called inflation, and it, it begins to answer your question. Right. Begins to? <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to go into it? Yeah, I do. I okay. would like to know. Okay, right. Um, I won't tell you why it's bolted on. We can edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 By the way, I might sound quite certain about all this, okay. but I ought to tell you that, that we've only ever seen 2% of the universe. 98% yeah. of it's invisible. Yeah. So this amazing edifice of the Big Bang Theory is built on the 2% we can see. So yeah, and you know there's loads of stuff, right, in the universe. You know, if you notice when you look out, there's big stars and stuff. I just, my, my, that's my problem, is how it all fitted into the original bit. Yeah. That is... Because <laughs> it's all very well saying it's all come from there, but it must have been quite a yeah. big clump. Okay. Common sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can, we can answer the question, yeah. what was the Big Bang, what drove the Big Bang, and what happened before the Big Bang. We can answer that. But, yeah. but you'll probably ask, want to know what happened before the thing I'm going to tell yeah, you about. I do. Yeah, but never mind. <laughs> Basically, um, the, the vacuum of, of empty space uh, in, in, is, is actually not empty. According to quantum theory, it's seething with energy. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to have the, the energy of our, our empty space, our vacuum. It, it can have a, a higher energy. So the vacuum has energy states like uh, an atom. Okay, so the idea is that the universe began in a, in a high energy state. And this state had two amazing properties. One, uh, it had repulsive gravity. So that this, bit of, this inflationary vacuum, I know it sounds ridiculous, doesn't I've it? I've got that. <laughs> So this bit of vacuum <laughs> started inflating. Yeah. And its second property is that when it, when it doubled in size, it doubled the amount of energy it had. So it's, imagine if you've got a, a stack of um, banknotes you know, and it, between your hands, and you double the distance between your hands, you get twice as many banknotes. That's the way the vacuum behaved. Oh, wow, that's good. I mean, physicists call it the, the ultimate free lunch. Yeah. So basically, this, this bit of inflationary vacuum started expanding and, um, and, and gaining more and more energy, but it was a quantum thing. Now, quantum means that it was basically fundamentally uh, unpredictable and random. So, so imagine this, this, this vacuum, it's got nothing in it, uh, it's, it's expanding ever faster, and all over it, tiny little bubbles are forming where it randomly decays into ordinary vacuum. So it's in this high energy state, but it randomly decays into our vacuum, okay? What's it like inside these little bubbles in this vast ocean of vacuum that's expanding? Well, the energy of this super high vacuum has to go somewhere, and it goes into creating matter, and it goes into to, to heating it to a tremendous temperature. It goes into making Big Bang universes. So in this model, it turns out that the Big Bang is not a one-off. These, these little Big Bang universes are going off all over this vacuum like, like, like firecrackers, randomly, and we're in one of them. Okay. Right. Now you're going to say, where did the inflationary vacuum come from? <laughs> I'm not. I was going to say, uh, I've got quantum things in my dishwasher, quantum tablets, <laughs> and you never know what's going to happen. Sometimes stuff comes out clean, but sometimes it's really dirty. <laughs> so it's, I guess that's why. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it, it could be, it could be, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it possible the Big Bang was created by a wanking god? <laughs> That could be the impetus behind it, and then that, then it sort of shoots off, doesn't it? And that's sort of, well, <laughs> and then that all flies around, or the glob. You know when you have a wank in the bath, <laughs> like it. So then it sort of all yeah. sticks in your hair and stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe it's like that. If have, have you well, considered that? No. <laughs> Do you I mean, naturally know what's go uh, all the answers, but you're just stringing out so you can sell more books? I don't know any. <laughs> No, actually, I'm, I'm very, very happy to admit that I don't know most of the answers, yeah. and, and that's what really excites me about science, that, that most of the interesting questions we haven't answered yet, and we, you know, I'm, so I'm quite happy to say to you, I don't know if yeah. you ask me the, that question. Okay. So you don't know about the wanking one, that's, no. that's definitely true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Marcus Chow! Thank you. Thank you. If there is a god or anyone out there with an understanding of the scale of time and space, they must be pissing themselves laughing at our stupidity. I saw a guy from UKIP on the TV the other day going how 
you know, we're from the UK, we shouldn't be allowing immigrants into the UK because we're from the UK, it's ours. And if you look at that from the distance of space, you must be shaking your head going, you know, why is this person from this tiny, insignificant planet in this tiny, significant country getting upset about this other person from just, like, over there, where they're so close together? And when 10,000 years ago, which in the whole stretch of time is just two seconds anyway he was in africa himself and three seconds ago he was a monkey and and now he's claiming some god-given right to stay uh, in one place if you it must be hilarious especially if you are actually god yourself um I'm fairly convinced that most of the problems for, of the human race stem from this idea that we are the centre of the universe. That's, it might be how we survived. I think we started off believing we were the most important species on a planet that was the centre of the universe. Everything went around us and everything went around our lives. Our country was the most important part of that planet and everything spun around. But gradually we had to accept we're not the centre of the universe, uh, that uh, we go around the sun, the sun's just on the outer spiral arm of a, one of billions and billions of galaxies galaxies and I think that's a sign of maturity for our species that we are understanding that and realizing that we're not the most important thing we're an insignificant part of a massive massive machine that goes uh, beyond us for so far but the irony is that if science is right and the universe is infinite we are at the center of the universe because everywhere is the center of the universe if the universe is infinite so we come round to that fact but the, the understanding that everywhere is the center of the universe not just you and your personal life I think is possibly our only hope for survival as a, as a species. Um, and uh, the journey to understand as much as we do about the universe is an incredible one. We shouldn't laugh at the ancient tribes who thought they were shoes from praying mantises thrown into the sky, or Ptolemy getting Mars orbit right, or even Archbishop Usher being so specific about this uh, time and date, they all help towards our understanding of what the universe is. How truly awesome is it that human beings understand the universe enough to work out it, it started 13.8 billion years ago? Not that we know everything about the whys and wherefores of where it came from, uh, but the level of understanding we have is truly astonishing, given that we were part of the explosion. The, the, the parts of us were in that explosion. If that bomb did go off, you wouldn't expect parts of the debris to to kind of work out what had caused the explosion and why it had happened and how long ago it had happened. Um, but uh, even if you were prepared to wait 14 billion years, you'd still say, think, you'd still think, I don't think those bits of debris are ever going to understand what happened to them. But here we are with some stardust that has pulled itself together enough to start to understand where it came from, even if we don't know quite why. Yes, we're selfish pricks and we fucked up the world and we leave public toilets in a bit of a mess a lot of the time, but... <laughs> We are, we're pretty impressive bits of debris sometimes. Uh, personally, from my investigation uh, today, I think it's most likely that God is a teenager, which, if memory serves me right, is pretty much the conclusion to every single episode of the original Star Trek series. Uh, but he doesn't care about us, but he wants us to praise him and worship him like some kind of insane Elton John. Uh, and he's either accidentally spunked us up whilst wanking like Atom, or he's created us in a computer game he's playing. He doesn't care about us. He enjoys torturing us. He'll turn us off as soon as he's met a girl. Uh, in fact, the chances are he'll just leave it on and forget that he was playing it and just let us play this game out ourselves. It might already have happened. It's up to us to work out what the future is going to bring. We don't have these gods with us anymore. We're in charge of our destiny. We're flying this plane, whatever, wherever this plane originated. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye. Thank you for watching uh, Rich Terring's Meaning of Life, for her mole. Oh, good. Uh, and uh, that's what all the cool kids are calling it. Uh,
It was nice of me to give it for nothing, wasn't it? And we don't really want to get sponsors or adverts into this, except maybe adverts for ourselves. If you can pay us back by going to Go Faster Stripe and buying some of their merchandise, they do all of my DVDs and some of my books. There's a couple of books you can buy of mine. Uh, they also things like Fist of Fun DVDs you can buy there, and all, all of my live shows. They also do all sorts of other things. Let's just take a, a lucky dip. Uh, Peacock Season, that's a, a movie with lots of famous stars in it. They've got stuff with, uh, by Kevin Eldon, Simon Munry, Stuart Lee. There's also, there's also Stuart Lee stuff. Uh, but uh, he's quite good. So they've loads and loads of DVDs. Go and do check out their merchandise. Even if you just buy one thing from them, that would massively help us carry on with this stuff. You can go and download extras for this series. Uh, also at Go Faster Stripe. You can come and see me live on tour at one of my gigs. Go to richhang.com slash gigs and you'll be able to find out all about that. Uh, and uh, you can also just go fuck yourselves. <laughs> didn't, have, didn't have an extra thing. Didn't have another didn't have another one. Uh, but you can if you like. I've got, um, I've got a fog machine for sale on eBay if anyone wants to... Uh, anyone wants to get that. Uh, so thank you. Do just spread the word about this. Tell your friends if you've enjoyed it and uh, just let's get as many downloads as we can and many people watching this as possible. Uh, and then who knows where this might lead. <laughs>